Hello, my name is Marnie Tichnell. I work for The Ohio State University within the College of Food, Agricultural, and Environmental Sciences. In this video, I'm going to be talking all about the life of a bat, where they live, where they sleep, what they're doing at different times of the year, and how they raise their young. Ready? Let's get started. Here's what we're going to talk about during this video. We're going to start by talking about what Ohio bats are doing during the spring, summer, and fall, April through September. Then we will finish talking about what bats are doing during winter time, October through March. So during April and September, bats are nocturnal. Do you know what that means? Right, it's an animal that is awake during the nighttime. So from April to September, our Ohio bats spend the night flying from place to place, using echolocation to find their way around and to find and capture insects to eat. During the day, they are sleeping. And in the early summer, the mama bats are having their babies. So let's talk a little bit more about where bats sleep during the day. When a bat sleeps or rests, we call it roosting. So where do bats roost during the day? Well, it depends on the bat species we're talking about. There are 10 different species of bats in Ohio, and some like to sleep right in the canopy of trees, like you're seeing here in this picture. Now that little arrow is pointing to where the bat is because researchers have used equipment to locate that bat. And I'll zoom in so you can see what they found. So there is the little bat. So this is a hoary bat. It's our largest species in Ohio, and it's holding on to the leaves and snoozing the day away. Hoary bats aren't the only species of Ohio bats that like to roost alone among the trees. Here are a few other species that roost this way as well. The eastern red bat has vibrant orange red fur, and the reason there are two pictures shown here is because one is the female and she is on the left side and one is the male on the right side. And so this is the only bat species in Ohio where the girls look different from the boys. We also see the hoary bat once again in the bottom left named for its frost tipped fur and the silver haired bat uh, in the bottom right of those four bat pictures shown there. So during the summer, when these bats are not out flying at night, they are most often found in our forests sleeping alone among the leaves. And that's why we often call this group of bats our solitary bats. I wanted to show you this model of a red bat. So this is a life-sized model and it's in the position that a red bat would take while it's roosting. So notice we have one foot right here and perhaps it would be using that one foot to hold on to the tree and then the other foot is stretched right here. And notice this right here, this is the flap of skin that stretches between the two ankles on the bat. And in our red bats, and as well as, as the other solitary bats we talked about, the hoary bat and the silver-haired bat, this flap of skin is covered in fur. <clears throat> and so that kind of works like um, a blanket on those cooler nights, which is why this little bat has it wrapped around uh, its body. Like most bats, the wings are tucked in here at the sides of its body. And I'll kind of turn it around so you can see the back. Now the paint's kind of chipping away a little bit on this guy because um, he is one that I frequently pass around at programs. And so here is our little red bat. Now there are other species of bats that like to roost in trees, like you are seeing here. Bats will use hollowed out sections or uh, cavities in live or dead trees to roost inside of. They also like to roost under bark on live and dead trees that is kind of pulling away from the trunk a little bit. And you can really see an example of that on that first picture on the far left, which is of a dead tree. You can also see this bark kind of pulling away um, from the base of the tree on uh, that last picture on the far right. And that's actually a live tree 
called a shagbark hickory. Bats that like to roost in trees like these also do something different than the solitary bat species we just spoke about, about like that red bat. They like to roost together in big groups like you'll see in this next picture. Here we are looking at bats roosting together, which we call a colony. Some of our Ohio species like to live together in colonies. Depending on the species, some colonies can get really big with hundreds of bats living together. Those colonies will form in those trees that we just talked about. Those trees with cavities, um, hollow sections or bark pulling away from the base of the tree. But they'll also roost in other places like you see here in a building, um, barns, for example, and attics. Also under bridges or in bat houses that we make for bats. An interesting fact about these colonies is that they are often female bats that have gathered together for an important reason, to have their babies. So we call these colonies maternity colonies. So whether the colony is living in trees, an attic, a barn, or a bat house that we made, they are often maternity colonies. Now, sometimes the males will form uh, smaller bachelor colonies, but really large colonies are going to be the females. Here are some examples of Ohio bats that like to live in colonies. You see them on the right side of the screen. We have the little brown bat in the upper left and the big brown bat in the upper right. And below them, we have the northern long-eared bat and the Indiana bat. Now, both of those bats are outlined in red because those species are Ohio's threatened and endangered species. When a species is listed as threatened or endangered, endangered, it means that they need help and protection in order to survive. So in uh, my next video, we're going to talk about some of the reasons why bats are listed as endangered and threatened. And last but not least, I've tagged some of our colonial bat species that we most often find in bat houses. So if putting up a bat house is maybe something you've done before or something on your bucket list, um, these are the bat species that you would expect to use um, that bat house. And again, it would most likely be a maternity colony, those females gathering together to birth and raise their pups that end up using that bat house. Here are a few other species of Ohio bats that also form colonies. So the evening bat and the small footed pat, uh, bat up there at the top are um, pretty rare in Ohio. The tricolored bat along the bottom um, is, uh, it holds a special place in my heart because it's the very first species I caught when I studied bats uh, many years ago. Um, they form smaller maternity colonies, and a lot of times those colonies are forming in, in dead leaf clusters up in the trees. So they're one of our smallest Ohio species, and they have a very fluttery flight pattern, and because of that are sometimes mistaken for a large moth. Now I've added a, a model of a little brown bat next to our red bat that we looked at earlier. This one is also life-sized. And so our little brown bats are one of our um, smaller bats with a, you know, kind of a light brown fur. Okay, and this little model, the wings are tucked at its side. And if I flip it over right here, bring it up a little bit closer. You can see um, the tail right here. So most, uh, many of our bats have tails. Um, they're often encompassed by the skin. So remember we looked at that skin on the red bat, it was kind of flapped around itself like a blanket. Um, and then the little brown bat, we don't see it in that position. And maybe you can't tell, but there's also no fur on it. Um, so in our little brown bats, that, that skin right here um, doesn't have uh, fur on it. Now this, this skin right here, which is called the interfemoral membrane, does actually have a use. Um, it makes for a very handy net and some bats will use it to uh, trap an insect 
and then they will flex forward and grab it in its mouth. So once again, this was our little brown bat. So as we've been talking about where bats like to live, we see that most like to live in forests. Yes, sometimes we do have bats living in buildings, but naturally they like to live where there are trees for them to roost in. Now I'd like to move into talking a little bit about when baby bats are born. Baby bats are called pups. Mating takes place in the fall, but the female doesn't give birth to her pups until the next year. Now this delay is an advantage because, the, because it ensures that the pups will be born at the time of insect emergence, which is great timing, right? You want your young to be born when there is lots and lots of food for them to eat. Now bats do need to be able to fly in order to capture their insect prey. So thankfully it only takes the pups about four weeks after being born um, before they're out flying on their own. So here's how it typically plays out during the calendar year. April, the bats are showing up at their roost sites, and by May or June, the pups are born. Now our bat species, depending on the species, are going to have one to three pups per female. Um, many are just going to have one pup per female, and they're pretty big, so they're 20 to 30% of the mother's weight. Um, so they're born um, a little bit bigger, and in some cases, especially in their feet, more developed. So they can um, hang on inside that, that maybe that dead tree, um, hang on to that roost site while their mom goes out to get some food, um, but also so they can um, develop really quickly and be able to fly in a very short amount of time. And so by July and August, we see the pups are out flying um, on their own. So the thing I, I do want to stress here is that bats only have their pups once per year. And you might think that reproductively bats would behave more like rodents who have, uh, or who have multiple litters per year and multiple young per litter. But that's not the case with bats. They are also quite long lived. Some species can live up to 30 years like the little brown bat we talked about earlier. And because they are so long lived, they don't have to have as many young in one year to sustain their populations. They have the time to take their time. So this video that I'm about to play is of a mother big brown bat and her pups. It was shared uh, with me by um, Ann Wookie, who is a wildlife rehabilitator. And you can hear the mom crunch, crunch, crunching on those mealworms and the baby is on her right side, kind of wiggling around a little bit there. Uh, but Anne is a wildlife rehabilitator who is someone who helps sick or injured wildlife heal and give back to the wild safely. Um, so they're incredibly important. Um, so special thanks to Anne for what she does for bats and for sharing this video. Okay, so now let's finish up by talking about what bats do when it's uh, when summer is at an end and winter is coming. Bats at this time of year are migrating and hibernating. Let's explore that further. Remember our solitary bats we talked about earlier, those that don't form colonies? When summer is over, they are highly migratory. Some species undergo long migrations to warmer areas where they remain active. Hoary bats are a good example of that. And you can kind of see those arrows pointing out their journey um, north. Other bats um, are going to migrate and then become inactive, like the red bat you see on the right side of the screen. So this red bat is actually hibernating in the leaf litter of a forest. Remember, hibernating is a very deep, deep sleep um, that our animals or our mammals will use to get, get through a uh, particularly uh, rough patch, in the case of bats, a time of the year when there isn't or aren't a whole lot of insects out and about for them to eat. So there's still a lot we don't know about the migrational journeys of bats. Right now, it's a big area of study for bat biologists. 
Now the colonial bats, these species also migrate, but often shorter distances to the places where they hibernate. So again, hibernation is a, a very deep sleep where um, several metabolic activities really slow down. And that's so the bats have enough energy to get them through, in this case, the winter uh, with very little food and very little water. Here in Ohio, many of our species hibernate in caves or rather abandoned mines. So species have been, uh, or some species have been found um, also hibernating in above ground sites, such as within cracks and crevices of cliff walls. So our little brown bat and our big brown bat uh, that we talked about earlier that will uh, maybe sometimes roost in, in buildings or bat houses, these are the same species that when winter comes, will be traveling to these mines um, to hibernate and spend the winter. Here's a picture of a mine in Ohio where bats uh, hibernate. Caves are great places to hibernate because they stay roughly the same temperature throughout the year. So even when it is really, really cold above ground and you can see the snow and ice in this picture, down in that mine, it is still 45 to 50 degrees. Now, some bat species like to hibernate in big clusters like you see in this picture. So if you can see the lighter um, areas of that bat cluster, those are the faces or the noses of the bats. So they're really packed in very, very tightly. And some bats like to hibernate alone. And that takes us through a year in the life of an Ohio bat. I hope you learned a lot from this video. I hope you know a little bit more now about how our bats in Ohio spend their time. And I also hope you learned something particularly fascinating watching this video. And as always, go out and tell somebody what you learned. In the next video, we're going to talk a little bit about how we can help bats. Things that we can do in our own backyard, uh, things that we can build like this bat house next to me. And we're going to talk a little bit about why bats need our help. I hope you keep watching. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.